Today we'll be servicing the cooling system on our Onan quiet diesel generator. As usual, when working underneath the RV, we'll need our bamboo mat, which will help keep us from getting too dirty and catch any stray drips. We'll also need some good quality antifreeze, which should contain a rust and corrosion inhibitor, but not contain a stop leak additive. We can use either 50-50 pre-mixed or antifreeze that requires mixing with water. In that case, be sure to have some distilled or deionized water on hand. We'll also need some radiator flush to clean the radiator out before refilling it. We'll also be replacing the radiator pressure cap, which is a standard 13 or 14 pound cap that can be found in just about any auto parts store. We'll be using a 10 millimeter socket wrench to remove the access cover for the radiator pressure cap. Also handy is a clean funnel, rubber gloves, and a spare rag. This year, it's also time to replace our thermostat, which can only be done by an RVer if your generator is on a slide out, which ours is. To make that job easier, we're also going to get out our electric screw gun. One last important tool we'll need is a pan to catch our used antifreeze. Just like changing the oil, changing the coolant can be done even if you don't have a slide out for your generator. The one thing you won't be able to do if your generator isn't on a slide is change the thermostat since it requires removal of the top panel on the generator and access to the top of the engine. Of course, if your generator is on a slide, everything's easier with the slide out. Since we'll be running the generator several times as part of this process, remember to only handle coolant when the engine is cold. Hot coolant is dangerous. Make sure you don't get scalded. The radiator cap is located right under this cover here, which is removed with this one bolt. After removing the plate, the cap simply slides right out. We'll be replacing this pressure cap with a new one today. With the generator cold and with your hands protected, pull the cap up as high as you can, push down and turn just like a standard radiator cap, push down again and remove the cap. Make sure to have your rag nearby in case there's any dripping. Our coolant drain plug is clearly marked on the bottom of the generator. You might need a pair of pliers to get the cap started if it's particularly tight. Be sure to wear hand and eye protection and have your drain pan properly in place when you open the cap. Obviously there may be some splashing. Be sure that if you get any on your skin, you wash it off immediately. After all the coolant's drained out, Replace the cap and tighten it back down. It's not uncommon when draining the coolant for the overflow tank to stay full of coolant. You might have to siphon it, so a short length of clear plastic tubing could be handy for that. Now we're gonna do our radiator flush. One thing we wanna try and do is to avoid getting any liquid into either one of these tubes. These are the vent and overflow tubes, and this large tube is the fill tube. One way to do that is to use this type of funnel to put liquid in here by putting it way down inside the tube to make sure that it all goes in the fill tube and none of it in the overflow or the vent tube. After pouring in the entire contents of the radiator flush bottle, fill the radiator the rest of the way with clean water. If you don't have a long neck funnel, just be sure to keep the vent and overflow tubes upward and do your best to avoid getting any fluid anywhere but in the fill tube. Also be sure to pour nice and slowly to give air time to come out through the vent tube. Once the water is right to the top of the fill tube, replace your pressure cap and screw it on tight. After emptying the expansion tank by siphoning if necessary, refill it with fresh water using a clean funnel. Put the cap back on the overflow tank and start the generator. Once the generator is run for a couple of minutes and come down off fast idle, let's put a load on it to bring it up to full operating temperature. We'll leave the water heater and one air conditioner on for about 10 minutes to get the generator up to full operating temperature. After 10 minutes, we can shut the generator off. As always, ramping down the load and allowing the generator to cool 
prior to turning it off. After the generator is sat on low idle and cooled down for a couple of minutes, we can shut it off. And now we're going to wait for quite a while to allow the generator to fully cool down before we drain the flush out of the system. We've emptied our drain pan out into one of our spare plastic bottles and we're ready to drain the generator again now that it's cooled down. After draining all the flush out of the bottom of the radiator, replace the cap. Now let's refill the entire cooling system with fresh water. Once you've refilled the radiator and the expansion tank and replaced both the pressure cap and the expansion tank cap, start the generator again. Once the generator warms up enough to come off fast idle, let's put a load on it again. After about 10 minutes, let's ramp the generator down, let it cool off, and shut it down again. After waiting for the generator to cool completely, remove the pressure cap again. We've re-emptied our catch basin into one of our extra plastic jugs, and now we're ready to drain one more time. If your generator is on a slide and it's time to replace your thermostat, now's the time to remove the top of the generator to access it. Before we open up the generator, we're going to turn off the chassis batteries for safety purposes to make sure there's no power going to the generator. While we have the top of the generator off, we'll inspect the general condition, paying particular attention to the hoses, looking for cracking or other signs of aging. Our thermostat is all the way in the back here, and we're gonna take off the two bolts on each side of the thermostat housing. After loosening the two screws, there's our thermostat. Here's the old gasket and our old thermostat. I'm just going to clean the seat from the old gasket and make sure there's no debris on it. Set my new thermostat in place and the new gasket. And now we're going to reassemble the gasket housing. New thermostats in place, hoses are looking good, now let's put the top back on. Once we have the top of the generator back in place, don't forget to replace the drain cap and tighten it on firmly. Since we've opted to get regular antifreeze and not the premix 50-50 type, we have to mix it with water ourselves. We have an easy way to do that. We've taken one of our leftover vinegar bottles from when we flushed our water heater and we've carefully measured water into it to mark off how much is in it and we're going to fill it to half a gallon with antifreeze. Now we'll fill it to the one gallon mark with deionized water and we're all set to go. Now let's slowly and carefully pour our antifreeze and water mix into the fill tube. Again remembering not to get any water into the overflow or the vent tube. And let's fill our expansion tank at least to the cold minimum line. As you get closer to the top you'll need to hold the filler tube as high in the air as you can stretch it. We've turned the chassis batteries back on so that we can start the generator again. And now, with the filler tube held as high in the air as possible and filled as high as we can get it, we're gonna start the generator. Run the generator for a few minutes till it comes down off fast idle and gets warmed up. And then have the helper turn on a load in the house like the water heater to ramp up the generator and run it under load. And what we're doing is getting the air out of the system. After the generator is run under load for a few minutes, turn off the load and shut it down. And if we look inside the filler neck, the level's gone down and we can now top it up. Now let's install our new pressure cap and slide the fitting back into the plate. Put this plate back and reinstall the bolt that goes here. Let's check the level in our expansion tank one more time and make sure that we are above the minimum cold line and start the generator one more time. Come underneath and check the radiator drain plug for any leaks. We're going to run the generator on a high load for about 45 minutes to an hour. Give it a real good workout and make sure that any air bubbles that are in the system work their way out. 
sometimes there will be enough air in the system that the generator will overheat and shut down. If that happens, continue topping up coolant through the filler tube and the expansion tank as needed. It's not uncommon for the generator to require less coolant than the manual says it calls for. Part of that is because it's difficult to get all of the coolant out of the generator when you drain it. Another reason is that it's hard to get all the air out of the system and it'll take a couple of days of running the generator, checking the level, and then doing it again to make sure that you've got the coolant as full as possible. It's now 24 hours later and we want to go back in and inspect the levels of the coolant in the fill tube. We ran the generator good and hard yesterday and now we want to see if the coolant is still up to the top of the fill tube or if more air has worked its way out. Let's wrap our rag around the fill tube in case we get any leaking and pull the tube up as high as it will go. Push down on the cap slowly and carefully in case coolant is all the way to the top and wants to overflow and slowly remove the cap. Now we can see looking down inside the fill tube that coolant is not all the way to the top. So we know that air has worked its way to the top of the system. We're now going to refill with our 50-50 mix. We've topped up our coolant right to the top of the filler neck. Let's replace our pressure cap and slide the hose assembly back into the cover plate and reinstall the plate. Let's also check the level in our expansion tank and make sure it's at least to the minimum cold line. We also want to confirm that there are no signs of leaking coolant under the thermostat or near the coolant drain cap. During the first two or three uses of the generator after replacing the coolant, simply repeat the process of checking the coolant level in the filler tube and topping up as needed. If you reach a point where you remove the pressure cap and the coolant is already right up to the top after the generator has been run, all the air is out of the system and you're good to go for two more years.